My name is Shane Lynch, and I've kept a secret my whole life. I can't read or write. I've been told my problem could be down to dyslexia, but I've never taken that step to find out. If we go through this journey, and I'm not dyslexic, and just a lazy, good-for-nothing kid, what I've always been told, then, yeah, that might be a little bit hard to take. I know what it's like to hide your struggles in school on a daily basis. 20 years on, I want to see what's changed. Today, I'm off to Lockyer School in Dorset to meet some dyslexic kids. Unlike me, they've been encouraged to admit their problems. They've got all the help that I could have ever possibly wanted and needed. But actually, would I have wanted it? Now looking at this situation, would I have put my hand up to say, look, I need extra help to be exposed to the rest of my classmates, my friends and all that, saying, oh, Shane, he needs extra help. Is there a certain amount of pride in that? Lockyer's is a mainstream school, but it's proactive in working with dyslexia. Sharon Bowles oversees the special learning needs of the whole school. I'm really passionate that children who do find things difficult um, don't sit and struggle in silence. Right. So we encourage people to tell us if they're finding it difficult, but what we don't do is let them suffer in silence. Right. Because then they can just shut down or start to get really naughty. But I know I would have just fronted everything. Um, I never put my hand up and said, I don't understand. I never kind of went through any of that. Yeah. I just ducked and dived and, and got on with it, you know what I mean? So, God, you, you've, you've got a hard job on your hands, that's for sure, you know? Hello, how are you doing? It's believed that 10% of all pupils in the UK are dyslexic, and that's up to three in every class. This school uses learning tools that are designed to help students make sense of how they see the word on a page. Hi, I'm Sandy Hands. Shane, <laughs> nice to see you. How are you doing? <laughs> Got sandy hands. That's okay. And what, what's, what's a stand all about? Sometimes you model around words. Uh -huh. Sand is different because you can actually like, feel where you're drawing. And okay. Kind of when they're using sand or some Play Doh, they feel the shape of the letters. Some people can learn by looking at things, and some people learn by feeling things. And do you find one easier than the other? Feeling helps better. Helps you a lot. Yeah. Okay. A good thing about this is the fact that it doesn't matter if they get it wrong. Quickly. Okay. They're, they're not making a mess in their books. Yeah. No scribbles, yeah. no... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, very interesting. The children here are encouraged not to be ashamed of their dyslexia. But like me, they still find it hard every day. Thank you for allowing me to talk to you because um, I grew up in a similar situation to you guys. But my early days were very intimidating. I was scared coming to school because I couldn't understand what was on the page. I couldn't read and I couldn't write. How old were you guys when you first knew you couldn't really get on like the rest of the kids were getting on? I'll start with 10. You were 10? OK, so it's quite recent for you then. Wow. When the teacher's doing something on the board and you couldn't understand it, what, what did you feel like? I felt really scared. Scared? And worried that I was doing everything right. And because all my friends used to see what I did, they used to call me names and I didn't like it. Right. I'd usually get into loads of fights. And... Really? And what about now? When I found out that I did have dyslexia, I thought, well, that proves to them that I was trying hard. So it was a relief for you almost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you were diagnosed with dyslexia, did you even know what that word meant? Uh, no, I just, I, I got really confused because I didn't, I thought I was disabled or I didn't really know what yeah. I was. I try and keep it secret as possible because I find it embarrassing and that I don't want anyone to know. Yeah. You know, that I'm reading a book a bit um, babyish or um, I'm not spelling things right. I just don't want people to know. We've been working with Enrico and I know that often you've got yourself into situations where you could, you've been a bit naughty and a bit of a pickle sometimes. Hey, Rico, you causing trouble? Well, he did come with a bit of a reputation, I have really? to say, for being a bit of a naughty boy. OK. And then within, like, two or three weeks, we thought, uh -huh, I know what the problem is. Could you read no. everything you were asked to do? No. So how did it make you feel? It made me feel a bit, like... a bit angry because I can't really do something and I really want to write it down. 
you want to do well, don't you? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's really tricky for you to do if you can't read what you're meant to be doing in the first place. Mm -hmm. But he's making so much progress. Amazingly enough, listening to the students, uh, you know, it's definitely not a million miles from, from how I remember. Of course you're going to feel stupid if you don't understand something a teacher's saying when 30 other kids in the class do and you're, you one there, don't get it. You're going to feel stupid. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I completely understood their embarrassment about it. Hearing the children's stories has brought back the terrifying daily struggles I had during my childhood. I've come to visit my sister Tara to see if she realised what I was going through. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, good. Give me a drink, beer. What's happening? Beer. You can have a cup of tea. You're usually the best host ever. <laughs> do you want a beer? Yeah, I do. Who spare dinner is that? I love that as well. <laughs> we went to the same school in Dublin, now a distant memory for Tara. So how's Dublin? It's all right, actually. How was the grade? That's the funniest. Did you see the teachers? I saw your picture there. No, I did you? Yeah, Still? The, we oh the gallery God. or whatever the bleeding one to call it with all the photos. It's like 20 years ago. Yeah. Was it weird? No, it's all right, like, I have to say, it was uh, nowhere near as oh, what, what I would have thought was intimidating. It was almost therapeutic to a sense yeah. of somewhere that which I kind of hated. The school is bad enough without not being able to read it right, isn't it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know, what would it be like if I could? I don't know if I'd... Would I, would I have enjoyed it, maybe? I don't know. Growing up, I didn't admit my inner turmoil to anyone, even Tara. I didn't know you had a problem until there was one day in particular that Dad took you, me and Alison aside and decided to do a homework oh, spot really? check and oh, we geez. all just went, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. But you got picked on first and, and, that took and you, were just you got like, away with it. <laughs> and he was having a barney at the table. Oh, really? And then you were just simply saying, I can't read it, I don't know what it says. And then he picked up a bottle of something, I don't know what the bottle was, and he showed you the label, he said, read that label. And you went, I can't. Right, and then right, right, right. he went, bar me, and I think I just ran then. I was like, oh, I got away with it. <laughs> we left to do it. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, yeah no nice, problem. nice, nice. <laughs> and after that, Dad went to school, I had, I had said whatever was said. That was the last I've heard about it, I suppose. My parents knew there was a problem, but they didn't know what dyslexia was, and my illiteracy was never picked up by my school. Although schools are getting better, there are still plenty of people who, like me, have slipped through the net. So I'm heading to Manchester to meet university student Jenny. Despite being severely dyslexic, she's midway through her final exams of a business degree. Hello, how are you? Doing? How are you? Nice, nice to see you. Jenny, nice to meet you. Jenny. Come in. Thank you, thank you. So how are you getting on? Good, good, how are you? Grand. A cup of tea wouldn't go astray if you don't mind. No, yeah, of course, I'm a cup of tea. <laughs> Jenny's an A grade student in her practical modules, but has always struggled with written assignments, a mystery that's only recently been explained. Recently now, then, you've been assessed with dyslexia? Yeah, yeah, last so, week. How comes it only happened now? I've been asking myself that question quite a lot recently. Yeah. I was completely unaware of it, but I knew that I was a bit different. I knew I couldn't mm. do it as easy as other people. I got to a point in college where I just kind of thought, this is ridiculous. Right. You know, I'm working really hard to do this, and my mate will do an essay in her lunchtime right. and still get a higher grade than me. Right. And I think that's when I kind of realised, you know... There's got to be something up. There's got to be something a bit wrong. And in your assessment, what... So what did they do? Oh, just... Because I, I'm, like, I'll be truthful, I'm, I'm afraid of it, right? Yeah. Because I just don't know what I actually want to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I know I can't read and write, but I don't want to be called Don Meter. I completely agree. When I... I was so nervous, I started to panic. Really? See, I would too. I think yeah. I'd panic. I panicked. What if I'm not dyslexic? Yeah. What if I'm just not academic? Unaware she had a learning difficulty, Jenny's lived under a cloud of failure since her private school education. It was definitely harder going to a school where they expected a certain level of 
you well, know. that's a, the elite as such. Yeah, exactly, and I, I definitely didn't feel like the elite. Yeah. <laughs> I felt a massive amount of pressure due to this. You know, my parents paying a fortune mm. for my private school. So when I didn't end up doing as well as I should have, all my mates were doing, I felt that I was letting my, especially my dad down. Forking out all his money. <laughs> yeah. And you're just seen to be spunking it away. Yeah, exactly. Although Jenny's story is very different to mine, I recognise her feelings of failure. It makes me feel fucking angry, you know what I mean? Yeah, angry, frustrated. Right. Like, so disappointed in myself, thinking, like, why can I not, you know, do this? I think I hid it really well. Even though, you know, at home, I would work hot longer on my homework because mm. it would take me longer to read, there was never ever a, a complete issue with me not doing it. Right. I didn't want to be different on that level, even though I was. The school, do you, do you think they let you down? Yeah. You do? So you, you'd kind of cast blame? If I'd known I had it when I was younger, I could have completely almost overcome it and, you know, to where I am now, still struggling to read and write. And at 22, it's, it's a really strange feeling, knowing that it could have all been different. It could have changed your world 100%. But at the same time, you're such a determined woman. I definitely know I don't have the strength to knuckle down like you. I'm not a strong person in that respect and knuckle down, learn, study, read. You should credit yourself way more than perhaps you think you should. Jenny's brought me to a library to show me the extent of her daily battle. I've just lost my uh, virginity today. <laughs> it's my first time in a library. <laughs> it's been quite an achievement for her to get this far without help, but she doesn't find it easy. Coming into a library and not being able to get a book out like a majority of people can do just makes me go from here to here and I kind of feel that like, because I can't do that as well as other people, I'm probably not intelligent. It does make me doubt my ability of what I can do. Right, what are we looking for? Okay, so I'm looking for uh, one of the books to do my exam next week. Now, obviously, as I'm not exactly fantastic at the alphabet, this is probably one of my biggest challenges. We're looking for B. We'll find B first, and it should be in B. Mystery, Jeremy Bush. I don't know what that means. Around here, maybe. No. Like, in fairness, for me, um, I would never in a million years come in and, and just look for a book. No. See, I, See, see that information desk? <laughs> I was straight over there yeah, going, yeah. yeah. Have you ever gone and asked somebody? I, I normally, I feel embarrassed to ask somebody where, like, what? you know, A, B, you know, where is it? And they'll be like, well, it's after this, obviously. And I'll be like, that's kind of, you right, know, right, a right, bit right, embarrassing. Right. Help is available for dyslexic students. They're entitled to use a laptop and other specialist aids throughout their studies. But with just three exams left, it may be too late for Jenny. If I fail because of this, because of dyslexia, mm. if all I've worked towards in all my life has just come to this moment, these exams, mm. I think I'd, it would just be absolutely devastating. If I had the option of having a word processor mm. in my exam and had the extra time, I just know that I could go from having 50% to a first. And it would make what was in here so much better. And, I, you know, I'm just worried that it's too late. Clearly. Jenny is, is, is very worried about her situation going into these exams. She has a clear fear of walking this road and this path. It's a horrible position to be in. I do feel for her. 